What is even more important than flying a holding pattern or holding is our holding pattern entry procedure or procedure turn. The reason the hold entry procedure is important it is because procedure turns are used in our IFR approaches. So when it comes to procedure turns we need to know two things. First we need to know when to do one and second once we know that we need to do a procedure turn which procedure turn do we do? First of all what is a procedure turn? Basically it's an authorized turn that will put us in a position to do the published approach within the allowed area. Second there are three types of different procedure turns. There's a direct procedure turn, there's a parallel procedure turn and there's a teardrop procedure turn. Which one we do depends on the direction that we're coming from. When we are looking at an approach plate the only thing the approach plate will tell us is that we need to do the procedure turn. It will not show us how to do the procedure turn or which procedure turn to do. A pilot must know how to do a procedure turn automatically and which procedure turn he or she must do. So let's talk about when to do a procedure turn first. There are two ways that are noted on the approach plate that will tell us that we need to do a procedure turn. The first way shown on the approach plate is any time a course is taking us away from the IAF and the initial approach fix is noted with a procedure turn depicted on that course we need to do that procedure turn and in this case we will only do the teardrop procedure turn to the side that is depicted on the approach plate. Fullerton VOR approach is one example. You can see the Seal Beach VOR which is an IAF initial approach fix and that it denotes that we should fly a heading of 200 from the VOR first do the procedure turn and fly back to the VOR on a heading of 020. Another example of this is the number 2 most extreme airport, the Tonkin Teen VOR approach. From the Tonkin Teen VOR approach plate, we can see that after overflying the VOR, which is the IAF, we need to establish ourselves on a radial of 198, do the procedure turn and head back to the VOR on a heading of 018. These two examples are easy because the procedure turn is noted on the approach plate. We can see it and we can fly it. The second way that the procedure turns are noted on the approach plate is a little bit harder than this. A procedure turn must be done every time a little racetrack is noted over the IAF, the initial approach fix. For the US approach plates, this racetrack is always noted in a full line. So, every time a solid line racetrack is noted over the IAF, we need to do a procedure turn. Don't confuse a solid line racetrack with a broken line racetrack. A broken line racetrack only denotes a holding point, a missed approach holding point. So the broken line racetrack does not denote a procedure turn. It only denotes a holding pattern. What we are looking for is for a solid line racetrack. Let's take a look at the procedure turn on the Corona KAJO VOR approach plate. We can see the racetrack over the IAF, the IAF in this case is the Paradise VOR. So we can fly to this IAF from any direction. But the first thing we need to do after getting to this IAF is that we need to do a procedure turn over the IAF. We can't just fly to the VOR and depart it on a radial of 237. The reason being the airport is so close that by the time we establish ourselves on that 237 radial from the Paradise VOR, we would have passed our missed approach point so in this case we will have to do a procedure turn. If we are coming from the area 1 we will do a direct entry. If we are coming from the area 2 we will do a parallel entry. If we are coming from the area 3 we will do a teardrop entry. Now how do we find out what areas 1, 2 and 3 are? First let's go back to our basic holding pattern or racetrack. This is a standard right turn holding pattern. Inbound leg is a heading of 270, outbound leg is a heading of 090. The first thing we will do is we will extend the inbound leg into infinity on both sides. The second thing we will do is we will draw a line that is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the inbound course right over the IAF. The third thing we will do is we will draw another line which is offset from our perpendicular line at 20 degrees clockwise. For right turns we will draw this line offset clockwise. If the holding pattern or racetrack is noted to be a left turn pattern then this 20 degree offset line will be counterclockwise. 
but for standard right hand turns this 20 degree offset line will be clockwise. The headings of this new line will be 020 and 200. The fourth thing we will do is we'll erase our perpendicular line so the only thing that we are left with is our inbound course line and our 20 degree offset line. The last thing we'll do is we'll erase the right part of our inbound line. Now we're left with three areas. So if we're coming from area one, we'll do a direct entry. From area two, we'll do a parallel entry. From area three, we'll do a teardrop entry. Now, if we take our low areas and put them over the Corona VOR approach plate and we rotate those areas until the racetracks correspond with each other, we can clearly see the areas we've drawn. All we have to do now is enter our new headings on our rotated racetrack. A heading of 258 on our course line, a heading of 008 on the top, and a heading of 188 for the bottom. And there we have it. This will take time. This is something you have to practice to get it right. And we have to be very careful to make sure that we have the correct racetrack. A racetrack that is denoting left turns will not work on this. Now that we know how to find out which entries we need to do, let's talk about how to fly those three different entries. For the direct approach, we will fly to the Paradise VOR, the IAF, and we will do a standard rate turn to the right until we are on a heading of 078. Once we are on a heading of 078, we'll start a timer and we'll fly for one minute on the outbound leg. After one minute, we will do another standard rate turn to the right. And as we are coming out from the standard rate turn at a heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR, we are not going to be perfectly lined up all the time. Because we're coming from different directions to the VR and the wind pushing us a little too, we are not going to be perfectly aligned with a heading of 258 to the VOR, but we will be in a position to align ourselves with a heading of 258 to the VOR very quickly. So we're going to align ourselves with a VOR on a heading of 258 very quickly and by the time we overfly the Paradise VOR for the second time, we'll already be on a heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR and we'll be in a position to do the rest of the approach. If we're coming from the second area to the Paradise VOR, we will do a parallel entry. We'll fly to the Paradise VOR IAF and once we overfly it, we'll turn to a heading of 078. We'll fly on the heading of 078 for one minute and after that one minute, we'll do a left standard rate turn to a heading of 228 until we intercept a heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR. Once we intercept the heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR, we'll overfly the Paradise VOR on a heading of 258 and we'll be in a position to do the rest of the approach. If we're approaching the IAF from the third area, we will do a teardrop entry. We'll fly to the Paradise VOR, the IAF, and after overflying the VOR, we'll establish ourselves on a heading that is 30 degrees offset from our outbound heading. In this case, this heading will be 048. We will fly a heading of 048 for one minute, and after that one minute, we'll do a standard rate turn to the right, which will put us in a position to intercept a heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR. Upon intercepting the heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR, we'll overfly the VOR and proceed with the rest of the approach. Again, because of uh, where we're approaching the Paradise VOR from and the winds pushing us around, this standard rate turn will not be perfect. We're not going to end up exactly on a heading of 258, but we will be in a position to intercept this heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR. So all three of these procedure turns Put us in a position to intercept a heading of 258 to the Paradise VOR and allowing us to do the rest of the approach. Remember that for the airliners we're going to do half standard rate turns and we're going to double our times. So instead of flying a one minute out and doing a standard rate turn to intercept a heading of 258, we'll overfly the VOR, fly out for two minutes, do a half standard rate turn and then come back and intercept a heading of 258 to Paradise VOR. I know Corona is a bad example about airliners because there's no way an airliner is going to land there, but you get the idea. Keep in mind, this is not easy to do. We can all fly, but flying is the easy part. 
It is knowing what to do in every situation that is hard. This takes time to master, but once you master it, it becomes second nature. So treat this like a math problem, one step at a time, one approach at a time, and it will get easier. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys soon.